Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Career Pulse podcast, your vital sign for career and business from everyday go-getters like you. Today, we're going to be interviewing Sean Blanchard. Sean Blanchard is a mentorship specialist and entrepreneur who grew up as a little brother of one of Detroit's most notorious drug dealers, son of a professional shoplifter, who went on to become a university scholar, mathematician, and a pillar of the community. And he has a brand new book out on his life called How About That for a Crack Baby? That is highly rated and one of, has become a, one of a good bestseller on Amazon. And in this episode, we're going to break down um, just a couple of things. How, how could you unconsciously grow up with what we call really good, bad examples? How you can mold your ideal self based on different mentors you surround yourself with. We also touch on how to uh, not emulate, but innovate, collaboration over competition. We also discuss things and, you know, dive a little bit deeper on how you really need to follow your curiosity and you'll end up at your purpose. Uh, we touch on the power of authenticity, on how it's not really a matter of perfection, but a matter of progress. And it's through uh, discomfort that you, you're going to find innovation. Also, too, you know, we talk a little bit about, you know, always playing for Murphy's Law. Things don't always go as according to plan. Obviously, uh, Sean talks about losing his brother who was killed on the streets uh, during a drug deal and how that pivoted him toward uh, a better, cleaner path and led to his current passions. You know, we also talk about how leaders prepare for the pivots, the plan B's, and uh, also be aware on how you practically spend your time. This is a really good uh, practical episode, a lot of good takeaways here that you can implement and apply right away. And uh, also, we also dive into his, uh, Sean's theory on the four levels of mentorship and, and how to get your own personal uh, board of directors. And we also believe that um, every obstacle is an opportunity and Sean really gives us some really good nuggets that we can go off to apply. And uh, a lot of that is based around how we can use our misfortune as a blessing um, in disguise. So everybody, help me welcome the one and only Sean Blanchard. Welcome, everybody, to the Career Professional Pulse, your vital sign for career and business from everyday go-getters like you. I'm sitting here with the one and only clean cut Sean Blanchard. And uh, yeah, how you doing, man? I'm good, bro. Good, good, good. good. I first had the pleasure to meet Sean when I was an intern at a video production company in downtown Detroit in the, I believe, the summer of 2013. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, you were an interview, uh, you were interviewee for a project. I was working as a camera assistant, Mm -hmm. you know, nervous little intern, you know. And I later found out, you know, you were also the co-founder of Networking Out, you know, one this town, Detroit. And uh, that was a networking and uh, health initiative that I later joined that summer. Now, Sean is also the co-founder of Sean Blanchard Productions. Mm -hmm. He's also the style advisor and co-owner of Snap Suits, Custom Suits. And he's also the author of the upcoming biography, How About That for a Crack Baby? Anything is Possible in America. Now, just to give you a little bit of insight on who Sean is, for those of you who don't already know, Sean is a native Detroiter, graduated from the University of Michigan with a degree in economical mathematics. Upon completing his undergraduate studies, Sean was accepted into the New York City Teaching Fellows Program and committed to teaching in an underserved community in the South Bronx. Sean simultaneously received a master's in secondary math education. And during his tenure at Holcomb L. Rucker High School, Sean led his math department to the top 5% in New York's small school network. He also co-founded Men of Majesty, a group focused on molding the minds of misguided and or fatherless young men. Sean took mentoring one step further when he took legal guardianship of a young man who participated in the Men Majesty program. Under Sean's guidance, the young man later became senior class president, graduated in the top 5% of his class, and received scholarships to attend University of Michigan and Morehouse College. Now, back in his hometown, Sean is heavily involved in the Detroit community at large with his passion to connect and inspire individuals. During the summer months, Sean teaches mathematics at the University of Michigan Summer Bridge Program. And most recently, he has been appointed to Detroit Mayor's Administration as a Director of Youth Services. Sean also continues to mentor and deliver motivational speeches to young people about overcoming obstacles, networking, and cultivating individual talent. Also, Sean is a recipient for a number of scholarships and rewards, including the Raymond Krell Scholarship, the Judge Claudia Morcom Dedication to Community Scholarship, the Man of Service Award, 
the Holcomb L. Rucker Founding Legacy Award, Certificate of, uh, Certificate of Special Congressional Recognition, Ford Motor Company's Community Service Award, the Knight Foundation's Black Male Engagement Award, and finally, the Spirit of Detroit Award from Detroit City Council. Sean is also a liaison for the My Brother's Keeper initiative enacted by President Obama. And once again, Sean's inspirational biography, how about that for a crack baby, is set to be released May 16th, May 16th, 2016. Sean, how you doing today, brother? Man, I'm good, man. Good, I'm awesome. Good. Great to have, great to, great that we were able to meet here, uh, here at your, uh, place, you know, downtown, right off the river. And I'm really excited about your book coming out. Uh, a lot of exciting things we're going to talk about. Now, what do you typically tell people when they ask you what you do? You know what? And, and <laughs> that's funny, right? Because, uh, <laughs> when we were just speaking, or you were just mm-hmm. speaking about the bio and the, and the backstory and things of that nature. Right. It's funny because people could say, wow, seems like you do a lot. But quite frankly, man, I'm a mentorship specialist. Mm. Uh, and that's okay. what I do. Great way to put it. Mm-hmm. Short and sweet. Now, tell us a bit about, Sean, your beginnings and how people can grow up with what you like to call um, really good, bad examples. You know what, man? Mm-hmm. And that, I like that. That's uh, It starts with understanding that. You know, in general, when we're born in this world, we have all types of mentorship relationships with the Mm -hmm. world. That means from individuals, ideals and society in general. Mm -hmm. And a piece of that comes three significant pieces of uh, influence. Mm -hmm. We have good examples. We have Mm -hmm. some bad examples. But that third piece is really good, bad examples. Mm-hmm. Now, the thing is, we know what a good example is. We know what a bad one is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so really good, bad examples is mm-hmm. essentially you may not know necessarily what to do, mm-hmm. but you know exactly what not to do. Mm-hmm. So a, a lot of times you get a lot of kids coming up in some urban environments and whatnot, and they can have a lot of people around that are everything that they don't want to be. Right. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, it could be your, your drug dealer over here, your scammer over there. It could be whatever. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, that person is charting out what not to do, not necessarily what to do. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's a great way to put it. Um, Now, getting your uh, bachelor's in mathematics and economics and a master's in secondary math education, um, like you were saying, it requires a certain level of focus, laser focus. How Sometimes you say you kind of laser in, you don't realize what, you know, (laughs) what you just did. So tell me, like, how did you get through those years of challenge? Like, how did you stay focused on those areas for so long. You know what's funny is it's kind of like uh, when I go through a situation when I'm in it, mm-hmm. I don't even see it as a challenge. It's just what I'm doing, mm-hmm. right? And I just marry myself to whatever I'm doing at the moment, and I make sure that that marriage is fruitful, baby. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. So whether it comes down to a major in math and economics, when I was doing that, you mm-hmm. know, that's a major that I chose, mm-hmm. right? So. Um, Upon doing it, it was just something that I love mathematics. I mm-hmm. love money and how money works through through an economical standpoint, mm-hmm. through a mathematical standpoint in the world. And it's just understanding the principles of how money works because I, I just grew up a hustler, man. Mm-hmm. And so I just wanted to always get the true concept of hustling from more of a white collar perspective. Mm-hmm. So the laser focus is, man, you're just doing what you love to do. You don't even realize that you're doing it. Okay. Now, tell me some, tell me about some of your mentors, living or dead, parts you borrow from them and why. Now, that's huge, man. Yeah. We all have that. We all have to have a, a, a ideal self. And I think that's a mm-hmm. collage of different people that we consider, uh, mentors or the gurus. Mm-hmm. So some people that I have, man, my older brother, uh, his name is, um, T. Stucky. That's mm-hmm. what that, that's his street name anyway. Okay. He was like my first mentor, man. And, um, mm-hmm. like for, for him, he's just, dude, this guy was, when I first met him, he was the first man that I ever noticed that was more of exactly what I thought I wanted to be. And mm-hmm. he had such a CEO mentality. He was so diligent. He had such laser focus that it was stuff that other people would do that he wouldn't, that would, and it wasn't like, joining the party or following the bandwagon. He was that kind of guy where drinking and smoking was cool. He's mm-hmm. like, nah, we don't we don't drink mm-hmm. or smoke. We don't whole gang that. went right, he went left. Yeah, whole gang go right, we go yeah. left, bro. 
You know what I'm saying? Like all day long. Like more so he wasn't the Kobe Bryant. He was Steph Curry. He not trying okay. to be like Mike. He just doing him. Doing him. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so that's no, that's one. I would say the other one, mm-hmm. another one was my grandmother, man. She was okay. the first person that actually told me who I was and I believed her. And mm-hmm. so she was really big for me. Other than that, I can, the list can go on because I've collected them. I'll jump forward a bit and say my man Keith Campbell. Mm-hmm. Now, see, my man Keith <laughs> right. Campbell, man. Mm-hmm. New York. Right? New York, man. Yeah. My man Tell Keith. Tell me a little about him. Now, Keith, this <laughs> guy right here, first off, he's from, he's from a hood in St. Louis. Okay. And the brother wanted to, um, he like, like dropped out of school, had some interesting things going on with school and was doing some mechanic work and decided that he wanted to do hair. Dude became a celebrity hairstylist and mm. he's a hairstylist. Um, he's a heterosexual guy. Okay. And when I saw this guy in New York, I was in church and it was the first time it was 2006. Okay. It was the first time I saw a guy in a suit and thought it was dope. Never before that did I think suits were cool. Yeah, I mean, because even the early 2000s, you still had the baggy uh, yeah, attire. Yeah, yeah. It was yeah, just sort of, yeah. it wasn't really toward the late 2000s. It started going that way. So it was really, it was really a few years ahead. Right, yeah. exactly, man. Because you know, uh, Things weren't tight yet. Things, right, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> yeah. Jay-Z didn't say change clothes yet. You right. know what I'm saying? So, right. uh, yeah. he and he was the first guy that I saw rocking the European look, and the suit looked dope. I didn't understand mm-hmm. what he was doing. I, I didn't understand what was going on. I just knew that other guys looked like refrigerators. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and he did it, right? right so I'm right. like, man, I had to tap into it. Yeah. So he really paved the way for me to understand what fashion was. And I mean, now I have my own, uh, you know, I'm a co-owner of a yeah, snap suit company. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, we're going to talk a little more about that too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's funny how just, you know, his inspiration from that kind of planted the seed man. to, you know, another venture you're into now. Absolutely. Now, also, um, we'll, we'll kind of segue. In. I don't know if this isn't the best segue, but how would you respond to, I'd say, today's generation? You know, we're going back to, you know, mentoring today's generation of young black men and their their challenges and temptations in 2016 and, you know, the new digital age compared to us growing up in the 90s. You know, how mm-hmm. would you say with how hard is it to cut through the noise to reach them with social media and current music the way it is and other things like that? You know what? Mm-hmm. I actually don't think it's hard at all. I think it's with social media and music and all these other things that are interesting. I think it's they give us additional ways that we can reach them. They don't mm-hmm. make it more difficult. Yeah. But it's a matter of people actually utilizing them to reach them. I think a mm-hmm. lot of times what people do, they look at education as a whole mm-hmm. as this old way of doing things. When it's a whole new school way of doing things, you got to get with the time. Right. New school education. Yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And so basically, I mean, when I look at young guys, now I am Keith Campbell. Right. Mm-hmm. So now I come with the suit that the young guy's like, wow, he looks like James Bond or he looks like Diddy when he dresses. Right. Because remember, when I, remember when I first met you and like, you know, saw your brand and everything online and what you did. I mean, I didn't I wasn't seeing a lot of that. Exactly. Yeah. You know? you know? Yeah, so so you would say it's it's really it's really a matter of reaching them in a different way and kind of adapting versus saying oh it's, it's just too much going on they're too distracted because I kind of feel like with social media it's not like the generations before us they they were all good and good and they did everything they were supposed to do I feel like maybe sometimes they they went through stuff just as bad as we did but they exactly. didn't have social media and everything putting all that out there mm-hmm. it was kind of just like talked about but you didn't really know what your parents or grandparents did back in their day when they were just young and you know, doing what they had to do. Right. So kind of like, you know, what you were saying with social media is just kind of like meeting them where they are. Exactly. Guess, right. That's right. Okay. Yeah. And it's, it actually, it enables us to meet them where they are mm-hmm. and also to know where they are. Okay. Right. Because think mm-hmm. about it before and you had to page me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? When yeah. I was in high school, you had to hit my, my two way. I didn't make it to the man. pager. It was just going out by the yeah. time I got my first cell phone in 2002. Okay. Before I was going into high school, it was like a Motorola Kyocera yeah. with, with interchangeable <laughs> cases. Yeah. I had an orange case, a blue case, and a black case. Yeah. And the antenna pulled right up. Uh-huh. That was my first phone. I didn't quite get the pager, but that was my first phone. It was like, <laughs> it was the size of a, uh, remote. <laughs> That's hilarious, yeah. bro. So, but think about that, right? Mm-hmm. Like, uh, I went to high school in 96, man. Okay. And, uh, in 96, I mean, we still had, that was right before, if you had the big gray box Motorola that looked right. like a payphone, you know what I'm saying? With this super long antenna. A Miratech. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah. You were the man if you had one of those. Right. So, uh, connecting with people outside of them being right in front of you was something difficult. Mm-hmm. But now we can reach them. Okay. All right. Now, do you do you ever find yourself, Sean, struggling 
comparing yourself to other people's success and, you know, or those who are at a level, you know, you have yet to reach. You know, a lot of, there's an entrepreneur I follow uh, out in California, John Lee Dumas. Uh, he does a podcast called Entrepreneur on Fire. He, in he interviews different entrepreneurs. And a lot of times he talks about the compare and despair condition. So do you ever find yourself falling into that once in a while where you kind of compare yourself to someone else ahead of you? Do you ever find yourself doing that? You know what, man? It's it, I would say this. It's kind of like when we met, even with uh, was Run This Town. Yeah, Run This Town. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm really big on the concept of collaboration over competition. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so my whole thing is, I don't look at people and compare myself in any type of negative way. Mm -hmm. I look at people, man, and I get inspired by the work that they're doing. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I don't like the idea of imitating. It, we don't want to emulate. We want to innovate. So when I see yep. people doing their thing, I love it because, for one, you're giving me an idea of something I can spin off and do something different about. I'm not trying to do Facebook. I'm doing Twitter. Mm -hmm. I'm not doing Twitter. I'm doing Instagram. I'm right. not doing Instagram. I'm doing Snapchat. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? I don't right. want to duplicate what you're doing, but what you're doing is inspiring me. So I like to put a lot of people around me in my network, whether you're a mentor or a friend tour. Mm -hmm. I like to make sure that. All these great ideas are around me just to keep my creative juices flowing. Yeah, just to keep you kind of like in the zone. And like when you talk about back with mentors taking parts of them, you know. That's right. And just back to that versus wondering, oh, why can I be where they are? So that's a really yeah. great point. And even even you know? even in saying that one, right, yeah. I like the concept of because I, words are so powerful. Mm -hmm. I don't want to take anything from anyone. Mm -hmm. I actually just want to adopt a piece of it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's a great way to look. You know what I'm saying? It. Yeah. It's kind of like it's it's all in how we perceive this thing, man. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a good point. Mm -hmm. Um, what would you say to younger and even older millennials who may be stressed out, worried about just getting established, really trying to figure out what they want to do? I've struggled with this. You know, I'm still kind of struggling to kind of fine tune exactly where I'm headed and. How much, you know, specific focus I'm going to spend to each project, you know, toward my long term vision. So did, did you ever struggle with that kind of figuring out what your life purpose was, where, you know, where you felt you best served at? You know, you know what? I think um, I never really I never really ran into a difficult spot with it. Mm -hmm. And I, I'll tell you why I didn't run into a difficult spot with it. Yeah, so uh, basically with getting, you know, some people out there who are still trying to figure out what they mm -hmm. want to do and get established and feel like they're still not getting it. They're not. Let me let know. me let me tell you how this is why I feel like I never really worked a day in my life. Mm -hmm. Man, I don't a lot of people try to search for their purpose in life. Mm -hmm. I just always follow my curiosity. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like if if you follow your curiosity Essentially, I was just doing what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. People will always tell me like, man, you work, you, you always putting in so many hours. You always, you're like really laser focused. And I'm like, mm -hmm. really? I'm kind of not even paying attention to the fact that mm -hmm. I'm laser focused because I'm just doing what I want to do. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's right. like, uh, if you have a job, you're not clocking in. You're right. Just doing, you know. Exactly. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like if you were over there and you consider like laying down, watching Netflix, uh, relaxation. Mm hmm. Well, that's in your mind of re relaxation is because that's what you feel like doing. Exactly. I feel like working on my curiosity. Mm -hmm. So I'm over here going hard at things such as my book mm -hmm. or such as like custom suits or whatever I'm doing at the time because I'm so engaged and I'm just doing what I want to do, bro. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Right. So how can you not be great at something that you love or how can you not put your all into it and at least aim at greatness in doing it, you know? Mm -hmm. Hey, man, follow so curiosity. Curiosity, follow the curiosity, okay, and you'll end up at your purpose. Great one, that's man. <laughs> Just got you know, keep it coming all day. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> all right, now, Sean, what were some of your biggest setbacks or failures, and how would you say faith played a role in bringing you back from those dark times? You know what? Um, that's a good. That's a good question. Right after the um, the curiosity, mm -hmm. um, so I think I'll just name two. One of them was. Uh, Man, I think when my younger brother went to prison, a uh, mm -hmm. younger brother that I raised, I felt like that, you know, I did what I could. I did what I could or what I should at the time. At least I did my personal best in the moment. Mm -hmm. And um, 
the moment he graduated from high school, the very next day I flew to New York so I can enter into a master's degree program, you know. Mm. Um, so kind of part was part of that kind of like you just had to feel like being here to yeah. an extent, like there was a too much heartache. It was too much. You kind of had to get away from well, it was a little weighing down too much. I would say yeah. I would say it wasn't necessarily weighing down too much. Mm-hmm. It was the fact that I actually wanted to teach at my high school mm-hmm. on the west side of Detroit. Right. But they didn't have any positions available. So I applied around the country and I found a hood just as good <laughs> in New <laughs> York. Good, you know yeah. what I'm saying? So yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so I was going to New York, but I waited a year. I was accepted in 2005, but I didn't go to 2006 because I stayed here to wait until my younger brother graduated from high school. Okay. The very next day, I was like, "Bro, I'll see you later." Nice, there right? You go. Yeah. But that very summer, he uh, went to prison and um, he had 12 to 20 years for uh, for murder too, man. And he's uh he just did 10 years. Hmm. And so he, he'll be home soon. But that was something where I felt like, dang, I didn't make the cut. I was, you know, he was my first mentee. Right. You know what I'm saying? So that's kind of, that's kind of rough. But we learn from our failures, not just when we win. Right. So if you're trying mm-hmm. to box, you don't want to just learn from a guy that never kissed the pavement. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I need right. you to kiss that pavement and get back up so you can tell me, okay, anytime they rattle your brain when they hit your chin like this, that's mm-hmm. what you do. Right. So. I had to rattle my brain a bit and get to, to get back in there with that. That's the first one I'll say. The second one, I'll say, man, from a financial standpoint, man, you know, I remember coming back here from law school and I had invested um, quite a bit of money um, in a concert, man, mm. in, uh, in a project that uh, that this guy I know, he, he was just so sure about what was going to take place. And I'm coming here, man, and I'm going to law school and, you know, law school, you don't work. And I'm coming from, mm-hmm. I had a, a dope gig in New York, you know, I compensated on the other end. It was like six figure living. It was mm-hmm. cool. You, you had know? no time to work with law school. Right? I, you had no time to work. So yeah. I'm coming from living a, a six figure style lifestyle mm-hmm. in New York City to coming back here after losing a substantial amount of money mm. uh, because the deal went bad. Oh. Um, and it was like, oh, man. I was on my knuckles for a little bit. Right. I wasn't used to that. Yeah, <laughs> right? Just like, oh. Had to pick up the pieces. But yeah, mm-hmm. man, that was failure, failure number two of many. But man, I, I take them all because it's all wisdom, man. It's all something you can, you know, learn and learn and adapt towards the future. Absolutely, you man. Know? And that's going to bring me to my next point as far as like just being someone to learn from your mistakes and knowing that, you know, you're not going to always come in, you know, come in, uh, you know, great every time. How would you say, how impactful do you feel is the power of, you know, authenticity, you know, um, in, in a way, giving up the need to be perfect from, you know, being authentic toward who you are and you know what you represent? Yeah, man, I, I, I like that. I, I think it's uh, it's not a matter of perfection, but it's a matter of progress. Mm-hmm. And I think that a lot of times, you know, people can get hesitant and afraid to try things. Yeah. But I tell you, it's something about growing up. And any kind of hood where mm-hmm. you have to be creative with certain things, whether it's like you, you're finding a way to get money to do this or you're finding a way to to eat this way or to do whatever you're doing. And mm-hmm. you start to figure out things. Things aren't handed to you. So when you when I start to be creative with whatever types of hustles or whatever I'm doing, that's when the, that's where the gold is. Mm-hmm. Um, so. I think, uh, and give me that question one more time. Oh, uh, how, how impactful do you feel is the power of authenticity? Authenticity, yeah. Mm-hmm. I think authenticity almost got wrapped up in it going somewhere else. But mm-hmm. authenticity, man, I think that if you're not authentic, stop. I guess it, like, I only want to really kick it with authentic people mm-hmm. that are doing authentic te- authentic things because that's what a real fruit is. Mm-hmm. And you always know a tree by its fruit. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, if it's not authentic, I mean, I mean, I actually don't want any parts with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. And um, we're going to go to a quick lightning round real quick. Now, what are your top one to three favorite books? Um, yeah, choose. Okay. I'm a, I'll say Give Me the Alchemist. Okay. Um, I'll take the Alchemist. Who's that by? Uh, Paolo Coelho. Paolo Coelho. Okay, I think I heard of it. Uh-huh. Amazing book, man. Mm-hmm. Uh, Think and Grow Rich. Oh, yeah. You know, that yeah. one by Napoleon Hill. Mm-hmm. And uh, another one I'll say, um, Who Moved My Cheese? <laughs> Who's that? I forget the author. You don't have to look on that one. Who but Who Moved My Cheese? Now, that one's a really, it's a really thin book, but it hits you right in the head with some mm-hmm. of life's key lessons that you should know. 
Okay. Yeah. We'll check those out. Uh, who moved my cheese? Throw, <laughs> throw that baby in the rotation and revisit it once a year. Mm-hmm. Top one or two inspirational films? You know what? Number one, I'll say The Count of Monte Cristo. Oh, okay. Now, man, with John Caviezel. Mm-hmm. It's the same guy that played Jesus in the Passion yeah, of Christ. Yeah, Passion of Christ. Right? Mm-hmm. Um, and then um, the second one, I'll say Hitch. Hitch. Yeah. Man, Will Smith, yeah. Will Smith, man. man one of your mentors, I'm sure. Yeah, man. Yeah. It's funny because it's like the, people I can, can watch it. connection. You see the connection? Yeah. See, mm-hmm. you can you can watch. It's kind of like this. You know how you can you can see something, mm-hmm. and somebody else can see something, the same thing, but take a totally different experience from it. Yeah. Well, sometimes we say what's a motivational or inspiring movie. I'm naming movies, and you know, the Count, Count of Monte Cristo is a movie that took place with like olden days when they had swords. Right. Right. And, Three Musketeers time. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Yeah. And it's like why that? But it's like. uh it's so motivating to understand the humility in the man, right? Mm-hmm. And to understand the triumph. And then in the end, to understand the love and compassion and even the faith that was embedded in the movie. It's crazy. Then you take Hitch, and that's such a different type of movie. Mm-hmm. Um, you got a white guy with swords, and you got a black guy who's in New York City living mm-hmm. a life. But both of them have a story of redemption. Both mm-hmm. of them come from a place of humility. Both of them are in love with one woman. One woman. Mm-hmm. And both of them, in the end, they both win. It's a great point, you know, as far as, like, the symbolism. Because I feel like sometimes some people may stick to just this type of movie or what mm-hmm. they're always used to seeing. So, a lot, of course, a lot of people may think, count them on Cristo, you know, but at the same time, when I think when people maybe challenge themselves to expose themselves to more diverse content, like mm-hmm. you were saying, they're going to find, like, if they really pay attention, like, read in between the lines and the yeah. script, they're really going to get the undertone, you know, yeah. of course, what you're what you were mentioning. Mm-hmm. Now, next lightning question. iPhone or Android? iPhone. Why? Man, one thing I'll say, man, uh, bet on a jockey and not the horse. Okay. Uh, I'm a Steve. I love Steve Jobs' philosophies, mm-hmm. and I love what he's created. I like the concept of the iPhone. So okay. the iPhone was the first phone that literally is so simplistic because it has one button. Right. <laughs> It's only that one. is true. I, I forget about that. You know what I'm it's, only one button. it's only one button, man. Blackberries have like 50. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. And it was like the first mm-hmm. of its kind. It, it was the first mm-hmm. to have one button, you know, and it was just like how simplicity is genius. So I think about Steve Jobs and what he created mm-hmm. and I'm just like, wow, like I, I just love to deal in the space of the gurus and I look at Steve mm-hmm. Jobs and he is the iPhone. So I'm, I'm sitting here holding like a, a guru on my hand, like, wow, mm-hmm. a guru freaking made this and revolutionized technology mm-hmm. as we know it. And I love the functionality. There's some phones out there that can do some things that mm-hmm. um, some people will say they're better than the iPhone, but it means more than just a phone to me, just like the movies mean more than just the movies to me. Mm-hmm. Like there's always some underlying something about whatever I have mm-hmm. that has a deeper meaning and a connection to why I'm actually dealing with whatever I'm dealing with. Yeah, so a lot of a lot of iPhones, you know, is, vers- is versatile. It's once mm-hmm. again, it was revolutionary. Yeah, revolutionary. Just the fact that, like, I just I just didn't remember that. That I didn't realize that that it only had one button. <laughs> yeah, because you you just so used to the touch now. It's just commonplace. You know? mm-hmm. Dogs, cats, or neither. Neither man. Neither. Okay. Yeah. I'm the same way too. I mean, I mean, one day I'm thinking about getting the getting the dog. You know, maybe move out the Royal Oak or whatnot. <laughs> and, and walk them along Main Street. I don't know. But yeah, uh, I'll tell you what, yeah. man. Whenever I have kids, they can have whatever they want, but uh, like somebody else is mm-hmm. gonna take care of the dog. Okay. Yeah, I I, I can't do it, man. I rather have kids. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Man. Yeah. Now, is there anything that you know from maybe a mindset standpoint? You know, moving ahead in your career, is there anything that you that you feel still makes you uncomfortable, and is that a good thing? You know what? Being uncomfortable is a great thing. Uh, mm-hmm. Mario Andretti says, uh, NASCAR driver, uh, won lots of championships, titles. He says, like, you know what? You know, even though he, like, he wins a lot, mm-hmm. you know, when he's in his car, he says, you know, you're not going fast enough if you don't feel a little bit out of control. Mm-hmm. So you got to, so I don't think you're really dreaming big enough if somebody don't think you're crazy. You know what I'm saying? Right. I don't mm-hmm. think that, you know, you're really growing at a at a dope rate or or really expanding at how you should unless 
like you get to a point of where you're uncomfortable. Where you get those funny looks like, what? You want to do what? Exactly. Mm -hmm. And it's from discomfort where innovation takes place. It's kind of like, dude, I can't stand the fact that I got to put my food on the stove and let it heat up for so long. Mm -hmm. From that place of uncomfort, we have the microwave. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So Mm -hmm. I think that it's like, man, this horse gets tired. I got to feed him hay and he got to sleep. It's from these type of discomforts that we have the car. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like whenever we get into a place of discomfort, understand that innovation is coming because don't live in discomfort. That's my thing. Mm-hmm. If you are uncomfortable, understand why and execute how to make it better. Stay out of your, I mean, and keep, you know, try not to stay in your comfort. Zone, exactly. Right? Yeah. And then once you get comfortable, man, you'll run into another place of uncomfort and be innovative again mm-hmm. and just make it to where being uncomfortable is a comfortable place to be. Mm-hmm. Rinse and repeat. Mm-hmm. Now, do you ever feel once, feel like once in a while you may have those off days where something may not go right or according to plan? Does it get easier? When those things happen, you know, inevitably. And that's good, man. Yeah. And I think that's a good uh, question to follow up right after we talk yeah. about um, mm-hmm. discomfort, right? Right. So, man, it's kind of like this, bro. I plan for Murphy's Law. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. And then outside of the plan for Murphy's Law, there's Murphy's Law. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's so, right you yeah. know, it's like, man, you know, things don't always go according to plan, but that's okay. And I think the best leaders are the people who navigate when the plan is different. Be prepared for the pivots. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Yeah. You got to be prepared for the pivots. And um, it's even, man, I can tell you everything I've ever done, it's always something in there that's like, oh. You get to a point where it's like, oh, I got to pivot and not do something that was in the plan. I got to innovate right here. Mm-hmm. Let's do it. Man, I've done it so much at this point. It's mm-hmm. kind of like it doesn't even matter, man. Mm-hmm. It's, and you don't even get frazzled by it instead of looking because I feel like what people do a lot of time. And this is crazy. I was just having this conversation. Mm-hmm. Well, people do a lot of time. They focus on the problem and meditate on it. Yeah. And they let that whole energy just paralyzed and just, oh, why is this happening? Just questioning what they can't change. Yes, right? And until it just cripples them, right? Mm -hmm. And then Mm -hmm. they're like, they don't want to visit that anymore. But it's more like, you know what? I'm a mathematician. I see a problem. I want to solve it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Right. So it's like everything has some type of solution. Mm -hmm. And we have all these tools and different things that we can utilize. Especially in this day and age, you know. You know what I'm saying? Right. So it gets to a point where, uh, yo, man, if it's a problem, bro, it's a solution too. Let's do it. It's a, it's an off day. I would say, man, it's day near an off day every day. You know, mm-hmm. something don't go according to plan. I can wash my clothes, forget them, and now they smell like mildew. I gotta mm-hmm. do something yeah, real quick to get that fixed, oh, right? That's the worst. <laughs> that's the worst. You know, I mean, plan for the pivot, man, and don't mm-hmm. and don't get too messed up. And don't get too frazzled about it. Because mm-hmm. you never know what that that may be a blessing in disguise. The pivot leads you to something else even better. Absolutely, man. Now, what what is what is one thing you, you're always looking to improve upon, or feel you could do better? Man, I would say being a good citizen of the world, man. Mm-hmm. Um, and I say that because, like, just as being a like a man of God, mm-hmm. every time I do something, when I'm interacting with people, I analyze it not for their sake, mm-hmm. but for God's sake. So case in point, we were just having this interview right here and my niece, my cutie pie was over there cooking <laughs> and her phone went off. Yeah. Fortunate. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and so when her phone went off, I waved my hand like, man, don't do that. Right. Right. That could have just made her real uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So then I, I thought about it and I'm like, I ain't have to wave my hand at my baby like that. Mm-hmm. It's like I could have just been like, hey, babe, I get that real quick. Mm-hmm. It's cool. It's just a recording. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So even stuff like that, like I'm like, I love her too much to make her uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. And I don't like that. I love you, baby. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's kind of like yeah. that, those are the kind of things I reflect on, just how I treat like people, interaction with people and making like nobody, nobody deserves to be uncomfortable based upon another human. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Right. Let it be just a phenomenon of the earth that we have to find a, a problem to solve, but not like because another human being is making you uncomfortable. That sucks, man. Right. You, you know, know, you just gotta gotta keep that mindset. Mm-hmm. Now, um, how is important? We were talking about scheduling a little time management earlier. You know, a little bit. How important do you find time management, and do you find it important that youth are taught this at an early age? You know, what? value time. Yeah, I think uh, 
I don't know if I can say I was taught it at an early age. I may have noticed it, but I can't really point a finger on where, where I noticed mm-hmm. it. But I can tell you about how I feel about it. Mm-hmm. So, man, we got 24 hours in a day. Mm-hmm. Mathematically, man, you know, 15 minutes is 1% of your day. Hmm. So a lot of times if somebody's wasting my time and I notice that they just got 15 minutes, I'm like, I just gave them 1% of my day right now. Damn. I'm never getting back. I'm never getting that back. <laughs> make more money. You never make more time. Dude, you know, and it's kind of like mm. this, like you got to pay attention mm. to how people waste your time. You know what I'm saying? Ooh. You know, so it's like. Pay attention to, to how people waste your, your time. time. You know what I'm saying? Mm. It's our most powerful asset, man. And mm. it's like, we're sitting here paying dividends. To mm-hmm. people who are wasting our cash. Now, are you going to mm-hmm. go ahead and give somebody your money and let them burn? It? Nope. Heck no. Why yeah. should we do that with our time? You exactly. know what I'm saying? Exactly. Yeah. So it's kind of mm-hmm. like, man, I like I got a real big issue with people just lighting flames on my time, man. Mm-hmm. A real big problem with that. So it's, uh, <laughs> I got a real big problem with that, man. Like, I don't like to do stuff that's pointless. So a lot of times I'll find myself uh, scheduling my day. Like you just saw my room, man. Mm-hmm. I, I got four whiteboards up in there. Right. I got a, my whiteboard up here for working mm-hmm. out. I got a whiteboard on the refrigerator. Mm-hmm. My niece got a whiteboard in her room too. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Everything's just in front of you. So I mean, of course, your your the whole week ahead is probably planned, but of course, the day before. Yeah, you know, man. So you just wake up and just go. Man, so, the freaking you know. the, the freaking day before the week. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? My mm-hmm. executive assistant helps me out a lot. You know, right. not only that, man, but I even look at it like like just. Pay attention to the gurus, right? Mm-hmm. Warren Buffett says, bro, excellence is in the routine. Warren Buffett, mm-hmm. this guy has over $60 billion and says excellence is in the routine. So do you have a routine? Mm-hmm. Got to get you a routine, man. Excellence is in the routine. And of course, Warren Buffett would know that. You know, better than else. <laughs> I mean, of course, he manages investments, you know, just as much as time. So, And I'll tell you, Warren Buffett, he takes a large part of his day and reads. Uh, I think he reads for like six hours a day. Oh yeah, I've heard that. Also, like with like you know Hillary Clinton, um, um like you know Mark Cuban, mm-hmm. you know, because it's funny how just so, uh, most people get sort of complacent, like, well, I don't need to read that, or I'm all set where I'm at, and it's kind of like, okay, you're here, and there's other people that are making more money than you. They do, they're doing more than you, and they're still reading. They're not done with. They're always learning, but yet we're a lot of people are down here, and they're like, I don't need to know that. We always can do more, man. Our Cuban awesome. flies a lot. He always says, you know, I'm reading four or six hours on a flight. Yeah. You know, so why why are why are we like upset about reading? You know? Exactly. It's a big point, man. Mm-hmm. Now, um, how how would you handle you know having to say no to different things when it comes to maintaining your schedule? You know, the highest the highest level of priorities. And not falling into that trap of trying to please everybody. How do you deal with saying no to people, you know, unfortunately? I got three things for that, man. So the first one is, I'll say that, man, you know, what I've learned over time, I love wisdom. What Mm -hmm. I learned over time is that you can't please everybody. Mm -hmm. So just focus on pleasing God. So at the end of the day, it's kind of like if you kind of just plug into, like, what's in line with God's purpose for you to do, like, focus on that. If it's not within, like, what God realm of things is that he has for you, forget about it, right? Mm -hmm. If you have to choose, if you need an alternative. That's one thing, and that can be philosophical. Mm -hmm. I can get down to being practical with it, too, and I'll take it from the guru, Steve Jobs, man. Mm -hmm. Steve Jobs says, say no to a thousand things before you say yes to one. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like, man, be very comfortable with the concept of no. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I I believe that, like, when you say yes to everything, you're saying no to a whole lot of things that will actually push you forward in life. Exactly. So that's the second thing. And the third thing, man, like when it comes down to doing what I need to do, again, like it's one thing to make a, a priority list, mm-hmm. or a, a to-do list. But after I make my to-do list, I go back and put priorities on the to-do list. Like mm-hmm. which one comes, what am I going to do first, second, third, fourth, fifth, or whatever else, mm-hmm. and where am I going to take a break and continue? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, Ford actually said, you know, what he did to make sure that his company was much more effective and powerful. He said, you know, he had everybody make a to-do list, which is six things. These are the most important six things you want to do for the day. Mm-hmm. And I like to, I, while I don't only rely on six things to do, I like the concept of when great people say it's in the routine, when great people say, uh, you know, 
um, say no to a thousand things and say yes to one. When great people say, you know what? I need you to just focus on six things. It's like you got to understand that all these gurus are saying focus on your right. time. Say no to this over here and get to doing what you're supposed to be doing. <laughs> right. Right. So we're not going we're not going to we're not going to uh, pay attention to things that are wasting our time. You know exactly. what I'm saying? Yeah. And keeping that mind frame, man, it's real big. Really huge, man. If you if you don't if no if you don't respect your time, nobody else will. I exactly. That quote. Yeah. Now tell us about once again your new book coming out. How about that for a crack baby? Anything is possible in America drops May sixteenth, twenty sixteen. Correct. Right. And, and I, I do want to yeah. say it's mm-hmm. um. How about that for a crack baby? Keys to mentorship. Is Keys to mentorship. Sorry about that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Tell us about that in the book signing release coming up next yeah, week. Yeah, man. Mm-hmm. So, dude, this is a bro. This is amazing. <laughs> you know what, yeah, man? I, I feel like it's bro, surreal. It's 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 surreal. Mm-hmm. It is surreal because it's like, mm-hmm. um, I like a lot of things are taking place, and I've been able to do uh, a number of things that have been good things, mm-hmm. like. Um, Things that a good citizen of the earth would do. Okay. So from, you know, just whether it be teaching it from a high school standpoint to being a mentor to mm-hmm. teaching in the church to, to even teaching uh, at the University of Michigan mm-hmm. or whatever I'm doing or this type of business, that type of business, helping people with fitness or whatever I'm doing, right? Right. Man, this project right here, this is, this is like, it's your baby. It's my baby, bro. Cause it's all, all of us, in, uh, it's all in there. You know what I'm saying? It's just a culmination of you. you it's know? a culmination, man. Cause it's kind of like, you know, I didn't want to just write, uh, to write an autobiography that's just like, oh, let me tell you about how dope I am. <laughs> While that's cool, you know, I'm 33, man. I'm mm-hmm. in my Jesus year right now. So mm-hmm. it's like, it's Jesus cool. Mm-hmm. It's cool, bro. Just that it's cool to have a book that's, that's about you, but it's bigger than me. And that's why it's about, uh, how about that for a crack baby? I need to, I lead you to know where I'm from. I started from the bottom, now I'm here, but I mm-hmm. also want to put the breadcrumbs down here for people to understand how the only reason I'm here right now is because I paid homage to the great people before me. I paid attention to the gurus. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Right. And anybody can do that, man. So, um, I would say, man, it's cool because the book is about me, but it will make you reflect about yourself and then you will learn some things that will ignite you to push yourself forward through the concept and, and promise of mentorship. Mm-hmm. And and, uh, and with that sub, the subtitle, the keys to mentorship or the three keys? It's keys to mentorship and success. And there are three keys. OK, yeah. That's what I was about to segue into. Can you give us a bit of a snippet of those three levels of mentorship that you yeah. dive deeper into in the book? Yeah. yeah. And I'll, I'll say it's uh, it's three phases. Right. So there's there's three phases in life that uh, people can encounter. I won't say that people do encounter because some people just stay in phase one. Mm -hmm. So mentorship is simply being influenced by ideals, individuals and or society. Mm -hmm. So from the time we open our eyes, we're being influenced. Mentorship and influence are like synonymous. So I'll just say influence. And, you know, I'm talking about mentorship. So we're Mm -hmm. being influenced all the time. But we can live in different realms of it. And this is the first one. The first realm is unconscious influence. Unconscious influence. When you're in this realm of unconscious influence, you're in a world where you have not chose what is influencing you. Mm-hmm. You just have some good examples, some bad ones. And hopefully if you're smart enough, you got some really good bad examples. That's mm-hmm. phase one, man. With no self-awareness. You just walk through life. Just, just no self-awareness, bro. You're not adding mm-hmm. to what's going to influence you. You're just taking whatever it is. And if it's good, cool. If it's mm-hmm. bad, cool. Hopefully you can turn that bad into something that's pretty decent. Mm-hmm. But that's it, right? Mm-hmm. You have no control here. Mm-hmm. But for those people that are aware enough, smart enough, mm-hmm. you can push over to phase two, which is conscious influence. Mm-hmm. Conscious influence is where you say, okay. I understand what the world is giving me, but now I'm about to tell the world what I'm about to take from it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Right. And this is where you get the concept of not just looking at your friends, but you look at your friends and you say, these people are not just my friends. They're my friend tours. Right. Right. So it's like your network, like the powers in your network and the people that you're hanging around, man. Mm-hmm. It's something great about every individual that you hang with. You admire something about every individual that you with. Mm-hmm. Adopt those things and build your ideal self and merge towards that. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about influence from down what we, what we listen to as far as music, movies, all your hobbies, like your social groups that you're a part of. Like, bro, the list goes on and on. Social media, who do you follow? Mm-hmm. Everything is all about influence. These things are all influencing you. Mm-hmm. Are you in control of that is a question. 
right? Mm -hmm. And that's the state of informal mentorship. Mm -hmm. You have also the state here where you can take formal mentorship and being conscious, building this healthy universe. At formal mentorship, you have different types of mentors. You got examples, you got directors, you got sponsors. Mm -hmm. Examples are cats you watching, but they may not know you. Directors are cats that know you. You may go to lunch with them. They give you directions. Mm -hmm. They believe in your potential. Mm -hmm. A sponsor, they believe in you. They will open their network for you. Mm -hmm. You probably got their number and can eat dinner with them at the crib. You know right, what I'm saying? Right. And they will like open floodgates and even give you some type of recommendation or anything like that. Mm -hmm. But those are different levels of mentorship. Examples, directors, sponsors, bro. Examples, directors, sponsors, sponsors. Get your board of advisors ready to go. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Right. Cause I, I kind of, cause I'm getting, I'm getting better at that as far as like not, not getting out of that mindset. I can do everything myself and mm -hmm. I don't need anybody's help. If it's anything from, from my youth pastor who mentors me from time to time, so maybe like a university counselor while I'm making mm -hmm. career explorations. Like they're all like my personal board of directors, but they yeah. don't know it yet. Yeah. You know, I officially want to pay everybody, you know, to yeah. do, what I, yeah. do what I got to do when I get to that level. But at the same time, that's a great mindset to think about yeah, your man. board of directors. Yeah. Because most people just kind of go through life, don't even have it. You know, and your like, dividends is just your yeah. excellence. They mm -hmm. only want to see you do great, man, especially mm -hmm. when they believe in you. Mm -hmm. So that's creating a healthy universe for yourself. You mm -hmm. got all this informal influence, you got all these informal mentors, you got these formal mentors, and that's all great. This is creating a healthy universe. This is conscious influence. That's what this is. Mm -hmm. That third phase is when you are creating consciousness. Okay. So now you're beyond, you're always going to live in a world of conscious influence and continue to build yourself. You'll always be there. Mm -hmm. But that third phase is where you're creating consciousness and others. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Go so. So you go, it's three realms. You have mm -hmm. unconscious influence, mm -hmm. conscious influence, and creating consciousness, man. Creating consciousness. When you reach that level of creating consciousness, man, that's when you made it. Mm -hmm. So looking at what's next, I mean, I know we got the book coming out and it's just going to be a whole lot of, you know, the book launch and bringing that out and where you, where, where are you looking to go? I mean, I know it's kind of hard to think about that, but where are you looking to go? I mean, three years out, five years out, where do yeah. you see the book? being sort of like a blueprint toward something bigger to build upon, like an anthology or what do you, where do you see? You know what, man, I'm always yeah. looking for more, right? right? I'm always looking for more. Mm -hmm. um, one thing in it, I think that um, I'll give you three answers to that. Okay. I'll say one thing is, man, um, I want to make sure the concept of mentors is so prevalent mm -hmm. in this world, man, specifically in America. I need people to take that concept and really take control of it. And I want to be the catalyst to do it. Mm -hmm. And so I want, because people have to understand, man, like every king was once a prince. Yeah. That was mentored by another king. Mm -hmm. Every queen was once a princess that was mentored by another queen. Like this is not something where we have some little black boy in the corner and we talk about he need mentorship. The youngest billionaire of our time, Mark Zuckerberg, mm -hmm. one of his mentors was Steve Jobs. You got like Bill Gates, one of the richest, he's the richest man in America. Mm -hmm. And one of his mentors is Warren Buffett. Mm -hmm. And one of Warren Buffett's mentors is Bill Gates. They wow. do. You know what I'm saying? Right, so exactly. You learn from him. They're friend tours, mm -hmm. right? And so it's kind of like, you know, we got to understand that Big Sean's mentor was Kanye. Kanye's mentor is Jay-Z. One of Jay-Z's mentors is Warren Buffett. I mean, you got to look at how it's mm -hmm. like, I don't care. You can't put a ceiling on any man. Mm -hmm. Anyone, even when a man says, I'm your mentor, you're my mentor, hey, we're friend tours, whatever. Mm -hmm. right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. It's, it's something where it's like, I want to own that place and make sure that our answers are all in front of us. Even if you come from a place where I do, man, like I was a crack baby, man. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I wasn't raised with the picket fence, man. I got seven brothers, man. Mm -hmm. Three are deceased. Three of them have been in prison. My oldest bro got life right now. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, people can always come with excuses. Exactly. And it's like, man, there's no time for excuses, man. Like for every time, every every obstacle is just an opportunity. You know, our misfortune mm -hmm. is a blessing in disguise. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right. If I wasn't born a crack baby, my book wouldn't have that title. You know what right. I'm saying? If my mama was not a professional shoplifter, I may not own a custom suit company mm -hmm. or be a co-owner. You know what I'm saying? Right. So it's kind of like, you know, 
we got to leverage what we have. And I need everybody to understand that the answers are all around us. So at, like I said, I want to own mentorship and expand upon it. Right. Mm-hmm. Man, I want a movie. The, the, this story mm-hmm. needs to be a movie. Yeah. Uh, I, I hope, I hope toward that too. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Dude, I can. And you know, and it's mm-hmm. like, uh, and I, and I want you to help towards that. Right. Right. And I think that, uh, yo, man, I want to talk show about it. Mm-hmm. I like, I, I want to hallmark this and really help people. It's not a gimmick. It's not a game. Right. right. So it's something that I leverage and I know I've leveraged in the lives of others. I got mentees that come from Marcy projects that now are at the University of Michigan with a full ride. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's kind of like, I want to hallmark that eventually sometime in the future, man. I want mm-hmm. some schools. <laughs> and, uh, I'm going to keep the books coming. I'm going to keep the empowerment coming and I'm going to keep duplicating all the good things that I have. Mm-hmm. And other people, man, I need everybody to just adopt everything that I have that's good and decent about me into themselves and begin to do the same thing with everyone else around. And really just sort of start a movement. I sort of feel like this entrepreneur, uh, Peter Vu, that says, you know, plans fail, movements don't. Let's get it. You know, so you're more about starting a movement. There we go. And creating raving fans, advocates who aren't just about, well, this is this is the perfect business. And we have all these analytics and why this is mm-hmm. going to work. And A, B and C is going to go just like that. Like, I mean, you started something. As far as a mentoring movement, you even inspired me to take that step toward mentoring. I got back mm-hmm. involved with my church. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a uh, on Fridays we have uh, what's called Teen Council, where kids ages 13 to 18. I think I may have told you about that. And basically, mm-hmm. you know, we just kind of talk about different issues. We have the gym open up so the kids can play basketball. Mm-hmm. You know, so you inspired me to even take that step further where I thought I wasn't ready or who am I? Who are these kids going to listen to me? They're tear me apart. You know, but. It's it's been great, man. I started doing that back in September. Awesome. And you man. created a movement. I mean, you inspired me to take that next step. That's what it's Instead about. Instead of me being insecure, it's all about myself. I gotta do my own career and be all about me. Like, you know, your movement inspired me to look at you, bro. You know, so let me yeah. let me just tell you how it's like this is exactly what you're doing. Mm-hmm. We start off in phase one, phase one is unconscious. Yeah. You go into conscious influence and you gotta make stuff practical. It's conscious mm-hmm. influence. It's like when you begin to choose what are the people in, in the all the things in the world that are going to influence you. That's mm-hmm. where you are. We even sitting right here doing this podcast right now. Right. 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 So that's all up in phase two. Right. Mm-hmm. Yep. And you move off right into phase three and you say, you know what? I started doing this with the young people and blah, 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 blah. Now you're creating consciousness in other young people, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I'm, I'm just, we're spreading that consciousness. You're just spreading like, it, spreading it, spreading yeah. it. And you never leave phase two. You always dwell there. You're going to continue mm-hmm. to build this healthy universe mm-hmm. and you're going to continue to be great yourself, man. And that's what it's all about, bro. Being a great citizen of the earth, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And just like, you know, just, just keep, you keep spreading it out now. Okay. I know we're about to wrap up, mm-hmm. but just a couple more questions. Um, where can my listeners or, you know, future listeners, uh, find out more about you? Uh, give us some websites, some event dates coming up, yeah. um, along with snap suits and other things, you know, just, just let, you know, let our, our listeners know, okay. you know where we can find more about you. Okay. You know? Well, one thing I would say, uh, thanks for the plug with the snap suits. Oh yeah, for sure. Uh, one thing I would say is that Snap Suits is a custom suit company, $250 for a custom suit. Mm-hmm. Delivery time is 14 days, which is absolutely epic and amazing. Oh, yeah. Um, check them out, snapsuits.com. Um, I am the style advisor for the company and a, a co-owner, so that's awesome. The second thing I would say is you can always catch me at uh, IamSeanBlanchard.com. That's mm-hmm. my website. Um, if you want to buy a bulk order of the books that's coming out or if you would like me to come and speak, or anything like that, you can mm-hmm. connect with me there. And of course, social media, uh, Twitter, Instagram, you can find me at Sean TB, that's Sean with a W. Mm-hmm. T is in total. B is in, uh, 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 better. Bravo. 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 Let's do it. Yeah. Right? Sean mm-hmm. TB. And on Facebook is Sean Blanchard. And I'm, I'm just excited, man. So let's go ahead. Let's get the book. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And the thing is, the people that have read the book already, Man, <laughs> the feedback has been crazy. Like I, I had yeah, a build those Amazon reviews up. Oh yeah, yeah man, the feedback has been so ridiculous. People are like, "What? This book is freaking amazing!" I felt like I was watching a movie, and I'm mm-hmm. they, people have been saying like, "I keep asking myself like, is this real?" It's like mm-hmm. yeah, it's real, man. It's um, real. You know, it's sweat equity, sweat mm-hmm. equity, man. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's you know people people that will meet a brother now. And think because I come through with a custom suit and a smile that, you know, that you things know. were, things were sweet. You don't mm-hmm. know what you don't know, but that's the beauty in it, man. It's mm-hmm. a beautiful struggle. You know don't what I'm saying? Don't know until you ask. I don't know until you ask, man. So, yep. Crab the book. Uh, how about that for a crack, baby? Amazon. 
Uh, you can grab it there. Get the bulk order. I'm Sean Blanchard dot com. Follow. Be inspired, man. Let's make it happen and be a good citizen of the earth. Well, there you go. Uh, the full interview with Sean Blanchard. Really great guy. One of my own mentors. Um, it was a really relaxing, laid back interview we had at his apartment in downtown Detroit overlooking the river. Um, just some key things, you know, that I thought was really great. Um, how we talked about don't emulate, innovate. Um, collaboration over competition. Um, I like how we also discussed, you know, how to follow your curiosity or you end up at your purpose. Um, you know, I like how we touched on the power of authenticity. Uh, I remember how you mentioned Will Smith and the movie Hitch were a uh, big inspiration of his. And it's just, I just feel like he was just very, very genuine and just very upfront on just, you know, what his mission is and what he's doing. Um, I, also meant, I also like how you mentioned uh, don't live in discomfort, you know, find out why and execute. When you're comfortable, you got to innovate again. Also about how he said, you know, uh, make sure you're aware of people who may waste your time and you don't have to, you know, if you if you were wasting that much money as you would time, then you would, you know, change it up. Um, a lot of a lot of good practical takeaways there. Uh, like I said, Sean is a, a big pillar in the community and just the level of, you know, swag and uh, other other style that he brings to um, his mentorship and his mission. Um, I think really inspires a lot of people and continues to inspire. Um, go get his book. Uh, how about that for Crack Baby? Available on Amazon. And uh, yeah, once again, thank you for listening to episode two of the Career Pulse podcast. And we will see you next time. All right.